everybody's photographic journey is different. Mine started with Zeniths, then I moved on to Minolta, and finally on to Nikon. And I've stayed with Nikon ever since. This, however, is a Nikon that I never had, but always, always wanted. Nikon have had considerable success with their Nikon F range cameras. Uh, Nikon wanted to get into the semi professional amateur market, so they decided to, first of all, they decided to actually sort of farm out the franchise to Mamiya and they produce a Nicorette camera. Terribly, it wasn't terribly well received, wasn't terribly good. So Nikon decided to make their own uh, semi-professional slash amateur uh, Nikons, which we called Nikomats. This was the first one. This is the Nikomat FT and hails from around about 1965. So Let's have a little run around of the features. You notice there's no shutter dial at the top of the camera. The shutter speeds are selected via this lever here and you can see them operating around the throat of the lens in some ways like a, an Olympus camera. So a thousandth of a second through to, well, let's try put it on one second, and of course B. The frame counter is at the top here, which is very nice, easy to see, very sort of modern design for a frame counter. On this window here, you actually get a visual representation of the light meter. So you don't actually have to look through the viewfinder to actually uh, control the lights. I think that is really, really very nice. And in fact, some ways it's very reminiscent of you know the latest digital cameras. On the top, so wind on, wind back. This extra button here is beautiful. Let's see if I can change this. This is my depth of field preview button. So it stops down the lens so I can see what the depth of field is going to be. Utterly wonderful. Front of the camera, well, this lever here, as I've just indicated, shows the uh, shutter speed change. We've got a clockwork self timer here, and we've got our lens release here. One of the features of these old Nikon cameras is this little bunny ear connector, external connector for the lens. This actually uh, makes life quite difficult to get the lens on and off often. So in my experience, if you set the lens at f5.6, depress this button, and ah, it's a bit stiff. But with a bit of a wobble, I should be able to get the lens off. Then I have to make sure the prong here is lined up the gap in the bunny ears to get the lens back on. It takes a bit of practice but it's not so bad. Uh, to release the back of the camera it's not a pull up like you'd imagine on a lot of cameras but there is a catch here which then allows me to open the back of the camera. And you can see it's a vertically running metal blade shutter, which is a really early example of this type of shutter. Very, very advanced. The meter in this camera actually doesn't work because the battery's gone on it. But it's basically a, a gate with a plus and a minus on it. And you have to get the needle in the middle. You can either use the viewfinder or you can use this little window here. But, and a lot of people don't realize this, the meter only works if the wind on meter is in this standoff position. If you're left eyed, that can be a little bit awkward, uh, but it does work. Showing its age, you have two flash sockets. This X one is for electronic flash and the M1 is for bulb flash. 
On the bottom we have the battery case. It takes a 625 battery, uh, not so easy to get hold of. And that's kind of it. What a superb camera. Now this one's loaned to me by the Florence Nightingale Hospice Charity uh, to check it out uh, and it will be going online. Uh, I hope it reaches a really good price because this is an absolutely beautiful example of a camera which is almost as old as I am and that's saying something. So the Nickelmat FT 1965.